oxygen's oxygen's air's air, you'd think that uh, why would we have problems? And it has to do with uh, changes in uh, barometric pressure and how much oxygen is uh, available for our bodies to use at, at different elevations. As you go from sea level, the higher you go, the barometric pressure decreases. And with that comes less available oxygen for us to use. As we go to a higher elevation, our body is, is, is experiencing or seeing less oxygen available to us. So our body works to compensate for that. One of the common ways it works is uh, changing our breathing pattern. We might breathe deeper and slightly faster and in that circumstance the body is trying to then bring more oxygen into our body. So there's a variety of mechanisms our body works towards to try and help us acclimate to changes in altitude. The process typically takes a good one to two days at our elevation settings we're dealing with here in Colorado. People from sea level obviously a much different story that might be pushing two to three days but the more time you give yourself to adjust the easier time, more enjoyable time you'll have enjoying the mountains here in Colorado. A good strategy, so if you're traveling from out of town from sea level, might be to fly into Denver and spend a day in Denver, um, just getting your body kind of used to it at that elevation. And then the next day you travel to where you're ultimately going to go. It could be from a trailhead in the Aspen area, it could be a trailhead in the Telluride area, or Lake City, or other areas like that, which now you're pushing eight to 9,000 feet. Spend a day there then consider doing your uh, hike the next day. That's giving your body time to adjust over that uh, period of time to have more success with your outing. Being dehydrated is gonna exacerbate the symptoms of uh, altitude sickness or acute mountain sickness, and staying hydrated is, is definitely a big key. Uh, a lot of people advocate starting your hydration, you know, a good couple days before you even are considering an outing especially if you're coming from a lower elevation. But if you've had troubles before with acute mountain sickness or more severe symptoms, your chance of having that happen again is likely to be there. In that circumstance, then you're best taking even more time to try and acclimate and get your body in better shape over a slower period of time so that you have better success when you're at altitude again. So certain things that can uh, make your acclimatization process uh, be less successful when you get to altitude would be um, drinking alcohol, um, cigarette smoking, recreational drugs, certain prescription medications that might have depressant effects, uh, you know, sleeping pills, narcotic pain pills, those can all make your acclimatization process worse as well. You don't want to um, be overly aggressive with activity and overexert yourself. That might compromise your acclimatization process as well. So try and avoid some strenuous activities during that transition process as well. And then another thing that can cause failure is just rapidly ascending. So if you try and force that acclimatization process too quickly, that's gonna lead to failure as well.